room and uh, picture quality is a little the it's a bit laggy at the moment yeah good evening and uh, yeah you know something you, you set the schedule and for it to come on at six and i'm sitting there thinking for god's sakes we up sitting there looking at the camera thinking oh, i'll just get on with it good evening so first beer good evening is this fella sticky toffee pudding oh what a little beauty of a beer obviously it wasn't eagle brew it was wells and youngs that did these originally and then a year or so back good evening um then eagle brewery took over and took over bombardier remember bombardier with its patriotic um and rick mail good evening and nowadays it's sticky toffee pudding now i actually think the bottles look better the old style but you know obviously there's whatever went off went off good evening are you recovered <laughs> um five percent volume let's give it a pour because i'm ready i've just watched one division and uh, my God, that is so complex, that series is. Um, I have to watch the breakdown afterwards. Good evening. Uh, just to understand what the hell's gone off in the show. And obviously, this is this is how Monica Rambo's getting her, her powers. So, yeah, I preferred the bottles before, got to be honest. So, let's have a look at the pour. And yeah, I'm not pouring it to the side. I'm going to get ahead. It's as simple as that. Although I watched one of these beer. Bonjour. I watched one of these beer sommeliers or whatever you call them. Lovely. Yeah, it takes a bit of time to come back, doesn't it? Yeah, I've been nosing around some of the live chats. Good evening. Yeah, not so bad, thank you. I've been nosing around some of the live chats. Uh, I was a bit rough last night after that Imperial. Oh, bloody hell. Yeah, you did have some good beers in that beer hole. Good evening. So lovely dark beer. Obviously, look at the head on it. I mean, it's got a massive head on it. Banana beer. Yeah, it was brewed by Wells. And what's happened is, I think Wells took themselves out of the Marston's group as far as I know, and then Eagle Brewery, they've took over for Marston's, the brewing of these fellas and the, um, yeah, these fellas and the Bombardiers. So both the Bombardiers, you remember the Bombardier was a patriotic, quite the British beer, really. I mean, at Sainsbury's, we used to sell a lot of Bombardier. Mick, Rick Mayo did a lot for that brand to push them forward. And then obviously he died, sadly. And they've obviously gone a, a different route since then. They've not kept up with that patriotic thing. And I think really that was, that might have been a marketing mistake in some ways. No, not tonight. So this bloody gas fire, the other night it was playing up, thought the bottle had gone. Pick the bottle up. It's got weight in the bottle and you can swish it around. Now I'm no gas person, but I thought if, there's, if I can swish it around, there's got to be gas in the bottle. So today I blew out, I was going to get a new bottle as well, good thing I didn't. I blew out all the jets, and now it's been on about four hours, and it's lovely and warm in here. This good evening. Um, yeah, it's lovely and warm in here tonight. It's, it's about thirteen degrees, but I reckon it's warmer than that. I don't think the um, thermometers. Yeah, these are, these two beers are fantastic. Right. I was gassy last night. That was that Imperial. I even, I must have farted while I fell asleep and the wife says, is that you? I says, no, it's a dog. <laughs> you blame the dog, don't you? So I remember when this came out, uh, you know, I was in Sainsbury's, working at Sainsbury's at the time and uh, so e eager. All of the people that worked on beer were so eager to try this and it is. Oh, that toffee on the nose. It is gorgeous. It's definitely, um, I mean, it's only 5%, but it's definitely the sort of beer I like. And if you like this, Castle Rock Brewery in Nottingham do a similar. 
<laughs> yeah, yeah, I'm at 12 degrees tonight. Good evening. And uh, yeah, Castle Rock do a similar toffee pudding ale and in a can. Amazing as well. No, I've not. I've, I've killed off any orders for the moment. I'm not. I, I, I'm trying not to look at websites at the moment. I am interested in getting them 15 beers for 15 quid from um, what Mersey Beers said last night. I can't remember the name of the company. Is it Brew Republic or something? Where you get 15 beers, 15 quid and a glass. It does look lovely, doesn't it? So lovely, dark, poor. Um, the colour, like a chestnutty colour. Oh. And you know, so, some of the craft beer people out there, they might look at the supermarket stuff and call it, but some of the, there's some amazing beers in the supermarket, even amongst the traditional beers. I think I've got a good six months worth of reviews already. And I picked up the two for next week. It does look a dark beer, doesn't it? So let me put that there so it's out of my way. So. To the two badgers for next week, Cranbourne Poacher and Thirsty Ferret, good evening. And for the week after, because I'm really intrigued with the backstory on this, Old Peculiar and Rig Welter. So, yeah. And uh, all four beers I love, so it's, uh, oh bless you. Yeah, all four beers are, are in that, a Rig Welter is an amazing beer. And Cranbourne Poacher, Poacher's Choice, I know it has. Yeah, that was amazing. The abuse I got at Beast and Sainsbury's when Sainsbury's discontinued it in that store. So I'm going to be some interesting ones. Into I'm going to have to read up about the backstory between the two Yorkshire breweries, uh, just just for the want of knowing what they all went off. No, not yet. I've not been looking today, to be honest. I've been trying to free unfreeze oast pipes and stuff. I mean, I used to love Tanglefoot. I'm not so keen on Tanglefoot now. Um, I do. I love Golden Glory, but you but stopped it. Yeah, and for four for six quid, you can't fault them prices. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I think we'll leave it with the Sam Smiths. <laughs> Half an hour away. Go and knock on the door and ask him to uh, start rebrewing um, Golden Glory. Is that the Scottish fella? Rampant Lions beer. He did a review of Duchess de Begonia. If it's the same bloke. And I couldn't take that bear out of I thought I thought it was okay, to be honest. See, I'm not keen on EPA. I'm not. It's not my type of beer. I find it a bit bland. But obviously, horses for courses. Good evening. We're all very different in what we like. And that's the great thing about beers. You know, we don't all want to be liking the same beer. There was a Partridge Badger's beer a year or so ago. I can't remember the name of it now. Pluppicus Partridge, I don't know, something along them lines. Oh, I love the toffiness of this. It's, uh, I wish they'd bring out more of these type of beers, personally. I've never had Wig Welter on tap. That would be nice. <laughs> Yeah, yeah, I can't really say anything about that. Yeah. All different styles and uh, the, the way they are. Belgian quad, 10 to 11.3. Ooh, lovely. See, I've got these ones because the supermarket ones, you know, they're easy for people if they want to join in to pick up. 
Ginger Tom, 6% B&M bargains all day long at B&M. They, they have stocked it for a long while now. You can't get it at any of the supermarkets, though. Yeah, we're all very different, Tom. Thank God. You know, different personalities. Some people are more in your face. Some people are a bit more subtle and... Hold 6X on tap, tap. Oh, that would be awesome. Yeah, I think Twice Tangle is a much better uh, version of Tangle Foot. Yeah, Old Tom's 8.5, Ginger Tom's 6%. Oh. I know, I need to start going through some of these. When you say top left, it's actually the second shelf down. But yeah, um, I need to start right wiping up some of these different beers. But, you know, you can only do so many reviews at a time. Oh, I don't know. That's a, that's a tough question, isn't it? Jesus Christ. I'd have to put that question back on everybody else as well. Tanglefoot, as I think, has lost, been lost with the age. I don't think it's matured over the years. Some of them beers haven't. Parkin's Special Bitter at Sainsbury's, which is now discontinued, was an amazing beer. And then when I reviewed it two years ago, didn't like it at all. Um, what beer would I be? Probably an Imperial Stout. Pissed. Drunk all the time. Uh, <laughs> or some of the time, at least. Um, yeah, that's a really tough question. <laughs> I don't know how to answer it. Is there a beer that makes you that's a stressy beer? Yeah, well, if there was one that that'd be me, definitely. I reviewed the uh, Denveld from Audi today, the Einiken ripoff, and it makes me chuckle. Are they Audi just so bloody blaze bl blase about their uh, cloning? Oh dear. You gotta laugh, haven't you? I've got some that are a few months out of date. Yeah, I have gone through the dates. Most of them, to be honest, I've got good dates on. No, I definitely would not be an alcoholic free beer. No, no. Although I've tasted some good ones, to be fair. Don't go that far. <laughs> After this winter, definitely full bodied. All on the spring come, start walking around with a mower again and start losing some, some weight. I think I've just bulked up in the winter. Grafting away, I've not actually, you get bigger, more muscles, because obviously you're grafting away all day, but you're not running around much with a mower to lose the weight. So I'm probably stronger than what I was, maybe, who knows. You never know in life, do you? God, it's, it's like food, this is. So, in, people used to say Guinness is like food. I have a ride on mower at the Newark site, and you know you know, it's freezing when you're right on it. Even on a sort of hot day, it's still chilly. Uh, because you, you just sat there, tripped up, you know, going along. But the other side, I've got a, a walk behind mower, so it's, it's a little bit more, a bit more exercise there. Oh. I do like this. I think it, I'd put this in, certainly in my top 10 of supermarket only beers. I mean, supermarket only beers. What are the top 10s? Yeah, the old Tom Sands, just in, in the right place there, isn't it? On the edge of the camera. I was thinking of moving it over to that side, but then you can't see. 5% this is. No, no, I, I certainly can pinch an inch. It's when you can pinch a foot, then it starts to get really, really worrying. <laughs> yeah, I'm not going down that road. I've got my beer drinkers t shirts on today. Yeah, this is my beer drinking t shirt. I wear it every day. Yeah. Actually, it's the first time I've seen it for about three months. So, well, a couple of months at least. So, it's not, nice to get it back on again. Take the old beer review t shirt off for a change. 
I must get some more um, when I see them. I think I got this for three quid as well. Old Tom's an absolute classic. You've never had the banana bread beer. Oh, now if you like your fruity beers, it's not, nah, you're not, we're not talking craft beer fruity, we're talking traditional beer fruity, but it's an absolute cracker of a beer. Old Peculiar versus Old 6X. Ooh. Well, we are doing Old Peculiar versus Big Welter. So uh, we'll have to try and do that in a, a later one. Once everyone's forgot that I've done Old Peculiar already. It's thinking what beers that we can all get to, to, to put against each other's with a backstory. Because obviously the, the two Yorkshire beers, there's a backstory there from what I was told the other day. We're two breweries that don't much like each other's. Or maybe that was in the old days. Maybe they've made up since. Uh, obviously, I don't know that much about the backstory, but I'm going to read into it. Yeah. Some of these toffee beers, it depends, like, like, you know, it all depends on your, what you like, your taste buds, what you drank before and all that rubbish. O'Kell's Dunish Porter. Funny thing is, in Nottingham, most of the breweries all seem to be supporting each other, really supporting each other. And I, I love that because they're all going through tough times. Castle Rock probably more than anyone. Skull versus Castle Main. <laughs> I need to go. I, once I get a resource that I can get some of the, 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 the beers that I can't get from supermarkets, some of the Polish beers, strong beers and that, then it's going to be great, you know. Might have to ask low cost beer, see if you can get older stuff like that. Yeah, I might, I might message them and say, can you get older Polish beers? I really ought to put the glass on here and move, move that to there and put the glass on there. There you go. So, yeah. although it is, you can still see the ragger. The own brew has gone for a bit, but we're not drinking own brew tonight. I thought Aldi toffee beer was good. Um, I wasn't so impressed with the coffee. I didn't think the coffee had enough coffee in it. Oh. Pickled pig cider. I've heard of it. I haven't touched the own brew wine in a while, to be honest. Um, yeah, so which would brew chat would be interesting, yeah. Hobgoblin IPA for, for those who like, you've got to have to, a balance of beers, haven't you? You know, different beers to cater for people who like, you know, obviously some like dark, some like stouts. It's interesting to know what beer reviewers like, you know, what's their favourite type of beers. Mine is most definitely a stout. Shepherd Neem 1698 versus Broadside. I think Broadside's too good. Yeah, but Broadside's, for, for what it is, is an absolute world-class beer. Uh, I only discovered it two years ago. And uh, when I've drank it, you know, Broadside versus King Goblin, now there's a, I like the strong stuff. Yeah, I've got to be honest. I'm not so keen on the two percenters and three percenters. And the funny thing is, years ago, never touched a stout. I only had Guinness for the first time, oh, probably six, seven years back. It was mostly, um, you know, lager before that. And Malibu and uh, sweet drinks. I like, I like the sweet stuff. Baileys. I've, had, I've loved Baileys forever. Chinese Keith, got my mate with the Chinese eyes. I haven't seen him for a while. <laughs> Is that a reference to me? Yeah. <clears throat> oh. So Forrest Drew tonight, Leicester Fump to Liverpool 3-1. Liverpool are not in a good place as they was last year. 
Yeah, I wish Saddlers would revert back to 6.5%. Charge a bit more. Gillespie stand? No, never heard of that one. It says, isn't it? It's, you know, it's a decent... Uh, that's on one side, though. It's actually there on that side. <laughs> I, I've only just seen the scores. I mean, if they played well and didn't get the goal, then that's fair play. You'd love my homebrew log. That's the the Wilco's artisan kit. And uh, tell you what, it's an absolutely amazing lager. Give it a year. It does seem a bit laggy. Like Give it a bit of time to, um, to, to mature. Let me just make sure that the Ruddy... Uh, well, no, the Wi-Fi is off. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> So I don't know if I've told you, uh, my son was after some, um, oh, that's a shame, isn't it? To lose breweries, it's a shame. No, no, kept it to the exact, um, you know, what it was with the lager. Yeah, I didn't add any sugar or anything. <laughs> um, I forgot where I was going there. Yeah, it's gone. I'll be back in a minute. I remember where I was in a minute. Can't be the only one who's talking and just forgets what they're on about. No, no, it's gone. No. No. My filter these days. Mm, not even now, I can't even think what, why, why I was on about him. It's all about his son. Yeah. No, no, it's gone. Oh, yeah, 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 yeah. it's come back. Fucking hell. <clears throat> You don't get other beer reviewers like this, do you? Fucking dementia setting in at 49. I'm cooking the wife a nice dinner today. We're in short, well done. Right, so anyway, um, he wanted a... Bloody laggy. He wanted some uh, cola. He only drinks cola. You know, white cola, black cola, that sort of thing. Orange cola. And uh, the wife poured him out a glass of cola. Poured him out this cola. Gave it to him. Mum. That don't taste nice. Don't taste like cola, normal cola. And it wasn't. It was actually some some own brew wine. <laughs> uh, yeah, giving own brew wine to an eight year old. <clears throat> yeah. <laughs> Poor bogger. No wonder he didn't like the taste of it. No, it was proper wine. It was. Um, I think it was a Merlot kit that I'd done at the time. Bless his little sockies. Off the bottles. Yeah. I read. Oh, right. It's, it's a bit laggy. I'm looking at it and I'm seeing laggy on my side, which is a bit disconcerting. I mean, I, do, I turn the Wi Fi off because it, sometimes it tries to log into the Wi Fi, which is really slow. And it does seem a little slow on this end. Hmm. Maybe it's YouTube, you know, you know, because you're going through through YouTube to, to do it. Maybe that's what's causing some of it. Yeah, I would have thought it would be. Uh, yeah, I mean, I don't know how they can afford to keep YouTube running sometimes. You know, the sheer amount of cost of thousands and thousands of people every day uploading videos. Yeah. Uploading videos and then watching videos. The cost of all that stream it must be horrendous. Yeah, this one of mine, it's been here for about seven or eight months. And it's obviously it's freezing cold in this shed. And when I cracked it open last week to review it, I was amazed by how good it was. First time I drank it, I thought, God, I need to put a bit of lemonade in. Yeah, you're probably right. Good evening. Oh. Yeah, yeah, I definitely, I definitely think it's YouTube. I mean, I get the same issues on my website sometimes where the server's having issues. 
there's been times when I've had 10,000 people all at once on my website and, uh, you know, the servers just can't handle that much uh, traffic all at once. Google, YouTube, though, should have world-class servers, you know, not like uh, not like Curry's and that in England, you know. When the PS5 came out, every single website crashed. Curry's uh, very actually stayed up. Some of these sites had this stupid queuing system that kept knocking you off every time you, you tried to refresh the page to see what was happening. And, uh, yeah... I mean, my my website. I've had I've had over ten. Yeah, I've had over ten thousand on all at once. I doubt it. <laughs> at least I'm warm today. I've got a proper warm feeling below me. The gas fire is lovely. Thank God I didn't swap the bottle. Hey, eh? it was just the jets playing up. I can't put it on any stronger than one bar for some reason. I don't understand what's happening there. You know, but at least on one bar, at least it's warm in here. I mean, I'm actually quite toasted tonight, although I've got six layers on and this. So. <sighs> 13 degrees. It's like the three degrees plus one. Yeah, all thin layers as well. Probably why I look a bit bigger. Yeah, shit. Yeah, we knew about that. A car drove into the Trent <laughs> and um, yeah, they couldn't get to the to the car because obviously the conditions. So they've been there for two weeks. Poor buggers. It's getting hot in here, hot in the city. It makes you wonder if they, if 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 on certain streams they drop it down. Did anybody watch One Division? I can't be the only one watching it. It's so complex that show, and uh, I'm gonna have to um, download it all and chop it all together to make it into a film at some stage. Um, you know, join the episodes together. I'll figure out how to do it. Yeah, it's interesting, isn't it? Some some nice people joining the channel. It's humbling for me that other beer reviewers actually watch me. It's uh, you know, although I was last night watching on Kent's beer reviews on on his live stream watching, although I was a bit pissed. <clears throat> yeah, that that Imperial um, Tennessee whiskey stout. Jesus Christ, it gave me a thumping, and uh, I'm my guts. And then I topped it up with a few more beers as well. So by the time the end of the night, I was so steaming. I tried to watch One Division three times and uh, I fell asleep every single time. Yeah, but the wife didn't give me a bollocking this morning, so that's good. Uh, good evening. Yeah, yeah, yeah. When I, I did post a couple of comments. No, I don't. Oh, get out, Paul. <laughs> so, yeah, um, we're near the 30 minute mark. I think it's time now just to finish this one off and enjoy, get the banana out. Get the banana out. Hey, hey, I bet there's a lot of people saying that around the country. Dirty buggers. Um, so, a nice dark beer. The colour, colour's an odd one. It's like a chestnutty colour to me. <laughs> yeah. It's funny, you know, that I'll go back to that review, the reviewing the other day. The, the other day. I was watching it the other day. <laughs> yeah. Not going down that road. I was watching it the other day and it was it was flittering under 1.4 for about six days. It kept jumping to 1399 and then jumping back down. And I Googled on the internet, what's the crack with this 1.4? Is there a barrier or something? And then all of a sudden today I've looked and it's on 1415. So I don't know. I never understand this subscriber business. Um, but yeah, good, great toffee on the nose. And you know, for a, for, tra for a traditional beer, this puts itself, it can, on the nose front, it can put itself along with the old um, craft beer stuff. And on the taste, the taste of toffee, 
it's very it's i think it's like a bridge between traditional and craft it, it sounds so wrong that does yeah God, can you imagine if someone could flip the webcam around and you all of a sudden you're sitting there with your banana in your hand it'd be hilarious wouldn't it <laughs> <laughs> Uh, your wife's there, what's this about you've got a banana in your hand? <clears throat> uh, it's a good thing I've got a dirty mind. <clears throat> but anyway, yeah. Bless you. Yeah, that's the sign of a true man. Both hands. Dobbs are good. Um, uh, you can't be having a laugh, can you? It's what you miss from not going to the pub, sitting there. Putting the will to rights, taking the piss out of people in a friendly way, of course, not in a non, you know, none of us want to get into fisticuffs in a pub. No, I don't find it sickly at all. But like I say, we all like what we like. And to me, it just ticks the old raggy boxes, this does. So it's a nice beer. I liked it ever since it came out, even though it's uh, obviously changed its label over the years. But uh, yeah, it's a good beer. And if you've never reviewed it before, drank it, it's an interesting one. You've been using your banana too much. <laughs> Five percent strength. Yeah, 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 yeah. One of us is going to the pub. Or maybe two, because you never know who's in the background. No, I've got a different glass. I've got a clean glass. Hey, I actually cleaned all my glasses out yesterday. 30 odd glasses. Ridiculous. Yeah, good banter, a laugh. Walking into a pub and not being frightened that you're going to pick up some disease that could do damage to you or your family. That's the worrying thing. <laughs> I've got a right itch all of a sudden. But anyway, that's... Uh, yeah. So for me, love the, loved the, all the toffee elements of it. It really did fit the bill. And... As a as a traditional beer, it would to me this is like one of the. It came out as as far as I remember. I mean, it might have come out earlier, about two thousand and thirteen, two thousand and fourteen. I, I seem to remember it coming out. Um, but yeah, absolutely. A f a, a forerunner to a, a lot of the newer tradition craft beers that are really, you know, pushing the boundaries with taste. And a beer of taste is what we all need. So, that one's gone. Banana bread. And I've got to say, the old label was a lot better. The, the banana bread came out in 2013. Well, I thought it was longer than that. That's interesting. Yeah, I think we'll all be going to the Isle of Man for holiday. I want to go to uh, back uh, back over to Ireland to be honest. <laughs> so let's pour this baby out. Former's glass. I, I haven't got a Marston's glass. Yeah. Oh, yeah, he's got his banana as well. Yeah, let me pour it properly. For any purists. And the fact it takes a lot less long to go down. Now, even from here, 18 inches away, I get the banana, the whiff of the banana. There you go. It's actually made. I, I like it, I do. And when I want, I can just switch it over and just set the bottle down and put the bottle back there. So, um, like a mahogany colour pour. It's always hard to get colours of pours because it could be a dark amber in some ways. Favourite Irish whiskey. That's an odd one. Yeah. Yeah, you would class it as an ale. Yeah, banana bread beer. It's definitely like a traditional beer with the banana in it. Made from bananas, of course. Oh, beautiful banana taste. Because there's not many banana beers out there. If you if you look, there's not. I've not come across. I can't even remember another banana beer. Hobgoblin's got a taste of banana in the beer, and so a lot of the Belgian stuff you get hints of banana, but not not an actual banana beer. 
You can't beat a bit of black bush. Yeah, I do like bush mills is nice. So you can see the carbonation, quite a strong carbonation, really, on that. Obviously, two finger head. You can't beat a two finger head. It's amazing where, where you find banana taste. See, I drank hobgoblin for years. Ooh, that went too quick for me then, just then. £50 a night, isolation. Fucking hell, great that would be. <laughs> What was the bulldog that was bottled today? That one in the kitchen where I'm reviewing that one, that's poor. Oh, that was disgusting. It's banana straight away on the taste. Um, That sounds nice. The Dundalgan in the craft bar in the craft style barrel. Yeah, it's it's nice. It's 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 a different banana taste than, than you know than pulling open a banana and eat, chuffing a banana down. Yeah. It is. 5.25% lovely. The review when a bottle explodes was the um, Hanoi. So if you if you search Hanoi at the front on a, on a, on on a PC, where where the little where the little search bar is below this YouTube one, type in Normans in Hanoi. That's it. Guinness with a whiskey with stout in the background. That does sound awesome, doesn't it? Yeah, that bridging beer and whiskey together. I mean, there were some Chevys at Sainsbury's when I worked there. Some done in ale casks. Some done in whiskey casks. Although I'm not really a Chevy fan. I think no, that was sorry, that was that was actually whiskey done in ale casks. It is very banana-y. And it's one of them, whether you like it or not. Lunchbox, <laughs> yeah, it's like a nice lunchbox, would not it? Oh, let's have a beer at work. It just makes the afternoon go so much better. Could you imagine bringing out a beer that actually has got the element of your one at five? Yeah, St. Peter's, that gift set's good. I mean, I got the Christmas ales. I got the Discovery box, which was at 12 mixed beers. Yeah, five a day. Job's good. One. And uh, then I got the, the, the um, gift set separately so I could get the glass. And then I got the two Christmas ales. And then St. Peter's very kindly actually sent me six beers that I've never reviewed before. So that was, that was amazing of them. And because, uh, you know, uh, yeah. I mean, I could, I could, at the time, I could only afford the 12 anyway. Yeah. Cherry beer, plum porters. Yeah. I might have to do a battle of the plum porters one day. If only Morrison's in Nottingham sold Elgood's plum porter. But then again, you'd want it sold all around the country to make it, a, to make it easy to get. It's them beers that are easy to get. I've noticed that uh, Sainsbury's have got Fuller's 1845. So a battle of the bottle conditioned beers could be one. Fuller's 8 or the strong beers, 1845 versus 1698. <laughs> I've got a plum tree in the garden there. Three years down the run, a good load of plums to get me gums round. And I've got a cherry tree as well. I bought a cherry tree this last few weeks. So same again, you know, cherry and plum uh, beer. Cherry and plum stout. Oh dear. If I worked in a brewery, it'd be all Imperials and I'd be doing good evening. 
Damson. Yeah, yeah, Damson. Fucking hell. Who knew that um that Damson was a plump? I mean, really. <laughs> yeah. Battle of the chocolate stouts. You know, if you look at Young's double chocolate stout and Soltaire's triple chocolate stout, two amazing stouts. You'd like to think that there's some a brewery would get in touch and say, we like what you're doing, but hey, you know, that's up to them, isn't it? Um, I would think at the moment that most breweries are doing very well simply because everybody's buying beer online anyway at the moment. Any brewery that's not selling their beer online is, is silly. You know, getting your beer out online is critical at the moment. Getting it into bagging boxes. Um, kegs. Yeah, it's. Uh, I can't understand that, you know, especially now. I mean, we're a year in nearly. Bloody hell. If you can't put an online shop together in a year, I mean, I would think a lot of breweries as well opening their own brewery shops. It don't take much to open a little shop and have someone manning the till. You can have someone manning the tills. Why are you doing your bloody work? You can be canning and say, wait, get to the till, there's somebody coming. And, uh, you know. I mean, in Nottingham, if I look at some of the Nottingham breweries, they've got, they've got their own websites. They've got online shops. They've got local deliveries. And then they've also got adventurebeer.co.uk who also deliver locally. So Nottingham really as you know, apart from the fact that all these pubs are shut and the pubs aren't making money, you know, um, and it's devastating for pub owners because obviously if you're not making money, it's a, it's a struggle. But obviously if the government's subsidies help out, then let's hope so, eh? I mean, we don't want to wait till May for the pubs to open. Um, if you look at the news, they're on about the next group that they're going after is the 16s to 60s who are on the vulnerable or with underlying issues, get them um, vaccined, Whee! then start opening the country. I've had the East Midlands Pale Ale. Yeah, that's, uh, it was all right, yeah. Black Iris, their cans are amazing. Good evening. Watching Wales win, eh? Yeah. Rugby's never really been a, f a thing of mine. I mean, I watched England when they won England when they won the World Cup against Australia. Was it two thousand and three? I don't know. And uh, it was a great day. Yeah, cheers. And uh, yeah, I mean, I watched it because obviously you're patriotic, aren't you? You want to support. I missed that bit. Well, they're using the same recipe. So it should, it should match up the same. I have nagged at them to, to bring out, if anybody remembers this, Bombardier also did a Bombardier Colonel's Choice or Colonel's Reserve, one of the two. I think it was Colonel's Choice. And that was a stronger version of Bombardier. So whereas Bombardier is about the 5% range, this is about 6% or so something along them lines. I might be wrong, but it was certainly stronger. It's quite nice, yes. But on or on the nose, you know, you get what you, it says what it does on the bottle, really. Very nice. And for a traditional beer, from a traditional brewery, and again, as with the toffee, sticky toffee pudding, um, it is, it is like a forerunner to all this craft stuff you see these days. I mean, I know Brewdog came out in 2010 uh, nationally, with Punk IPA, but it didn't do well at Sainsbury's at the time. I think it was too early. And then in 2015, when I left Sainsbury's, the can industry was really, there was hardly anything in cans. You look now, bloody hell, the transition from them to now is unbelievable. You only have to look at Adnam's Broadside, a very old beer, but the complexities in that are absolutely amazing. I don't know if they class me as a key worker because you know because you work on your own. Um, good evening. Yes, very nice, very nice beers. 
Pink Elephant Ale, 8.5%. Not heard of that one before. I wish they'd have gone further and had more of these type of beers. There's definitely a market. My leg's burning. There's definitely a market. Well, yeah, Brewdog keep updating their range, don't they? The essential, yeah, the YouTube channel. <laughs> yes, they obviously use some. They obviously use something different in it to get that banana taste. But overall, it is a, it is a nice beer. It'd be interesting to see if someone could make a craft beer. They supposedly did use actual bananas. Supposedly. I mean, on the back it says it's done with fresh bananas. Let me get my light out because I can't see in this light. It's getting old, you know. 50 soon. Um, so they use fresh bananas and, and uh, malt, rich multi hops. So they say. God, I hope I'm not back to work tomorrow. Is it, is it Monday tomorrow? Okay, now. Do you find that these days, sometimes you, you think, so, what fucking day is it? No, it's Sunday tomorrow, isn't it? You, you, that's, that's for a blinder in my face, then. And you see, your, your taste buds might be more acute than mine. You ought to do reviews. Yeah, fucking hell. I'm panicking there, I think it was Monday tomorrow. <sighs> <laughs> oh dear, we don't want all that. Hey, don't want to lose the weekend. The weeks are long enough. Don't mind losing, losing the day. Yeah, thank God. <sighs> I was at home today and I'm thinking, what day is it? <sighs> oh God, fucking fire's burning my legs. <clears throat> We ain't got a totem for dinner tonight as well. I've got to think of something to cook. I've got a steak, but I don't know what the wife's having. Unless I cook something. I've got some nice chicken fillet in the freezer. So I might put it in warm water and just to warm things up. Yes, there'll be a few reviews tomorrow. Especially if the temperature warms up. Yeah, yeah I've never had banana bread before. I mean, I love bananas. I love the... I love the taste of this. I mean, you do get a chemical, bit of a chemical taste to it, but it is nice. It does taste like the banana sweets. <laughs> oh, yeah. So next week will be interesting. Um, Badger beers, Cranbourne poacher. Love that. And uh, who knew that Damson was a plum? Hey, fuck me. <clears throat> and then Thirsty Ferret. I was thinking, I didn't know which one to get. Let me turn that off because it's doing my nutting. All I can see is live chat in front of my head. Um, Thirsty Ferret. Then the Ode Peculiar versus Big Welter. Looking forward to that. Here's one I want to review pretty soon as well. So, from Alter Ego Brewing. And it's a, a raspberry and, uh, what is it? A raspberry ice cream porter. <sighs> that does sound nice. See, if there's one thing these days with the beers that are coming out, there's so many box tickers. If you like a certain type of flavour, it's like, oh, I've got to have that. than just 20 odd best bitters. And that sounds nice as well. So from navigation, a blueberry stout. I mean, I've actually brewed, brewed blueberry wine before. 
Yeah, Cranbourne Poacher. Unbelievable. You know, one of the best fruit beers. <laughs> yeah. I was actually using that Brewdog video to be a guinea pig so I could actually move the boards, do it live, and actually, uh, yeah, actually, um, you know, get it tweaked so that you can see that that Raggy's Tap Room sign there and the Raggy's Own Brew sign there. I know the bottle's in the way at the moment. I mean, normally I'd put the bottle down here so that you, you see the bottle. Although, yeah, there's about right. Cheers. I'll be having a better weekend when the uh, when the, when the cold weather goes. Yeah, sticky toffee pudding before this. That's a nice beer as well. Blueberry and waffle stout from Vocation. <sighs> got to say, Vocation. They you've got to be impressed with some of their beers they're bringing out. I mean, if you think about it, if you like the banana, if you like the banana bread beer then the Imperial Banoffee that they do is your, your really your next step up. Um, if this tastes good to you, the banana element, taste the likes of Hobgoblin, darker beer, banana element. A lot of Belgian beers have got the banana element, but the Imperial Banoffee pie. Whew. And strawberry and blueberry wine. Ooh. Yeah, it has been cold. I managed to um, defrost the hose pipe. Got that working. Loads of ice flowing out. That's a good price, two quid. Always pays to keep going to the supermarkets. Because when they change the range. Right. I've done a blueberry uh, juice wine before. It didn't, it was still a bit sugary at the end of the fermentation. Bottled it, and then a few months down the line made quite a nice uh, blueberry sparkling wine. But uh, what my favourite, but uh, it, it was passable, you know, it was relatively neckable. It was less harsh than the grapefruit. Of all the juice wines I've done, grapefruit juice wine is so, was so harsh. Prune juice wine was uh, in its own, um, um, what's the word, area. But the best wine, cherry wine from juice. You know, four cartons of juice, cherry juice to make wine. Oh, oh you've had it, have you? How did you compare it to the Titanic and the St. Peter's, if you've had both of them? God knows. Um, as for live reviews, God knows. Um, I haven't even thought about it yet. I'll do a mixture of craft and traditional. So, so I, you know, I, if I do one canned and one bottled, then we get a mixture. You know, I'm conscious that there's too much IPA out there. Uh, everyone's bringing bloody IPAs out and, uh, and not enough stouts. So, and... Uh, I mean, I've got enough, so I'll try and choose two different ones. Might, might be a St. Peter's beer. Snake bite review. Yeah. Yeah, hey, snake bite, that might be a thing. Right, that's interesting. So... Both the Titanic and the St. Peter's have both got elements which, if anything, Titanic's is more fruity, more sweet plum. The St. Peter's is more bittery. Um, both very good in their own way. I've done I've done the comparison, drank both at exactly the same time. Stevia. Ooh. Yeah, I've, I've, I've 
boffed up Strongbow before. Not, not good. Second name IPA. Can't remember. Oh yes, I have had that. Yeah, of course I have. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, snake bite. And you know, I can do a snake bite tomorrow because I've, I've actually got a bottle of cider that I'm that I've already reviewed, and I've got a bottle of lager that I've already reviewed. Good evening. Yeah, that's interesting. Yeah, snake bite, the snake bite review. Could be a long review because obviously two bottles together, so it'll be a long one. Yeah, that's what the wife says. <clears throat> but uh, snake bite with Vimto, I've not had that before. I want to do a black and tan as well, but I need to make sure I get the right two beers to make a black and tan. <laughs> yeah, you can't be a bit of banana. Yeah, I've got a Carlsberg export, which is good for the um, lager side of things. And I've got, um, I've seen the cider somewhere that I've reviewed. Still got a bad neck. God knows what that's about. Yeah, somewhere. There's a bottle somewhere of a cider. Yeah, I could do actually. You're right, the Galahad. Yeah, at least they get it bloody drunk. Well played. I might do that instead. Yeah, Galahad. And then some then some random cider that I've already reviewed. Depth charges and brain images. I've never heard of them. Yeah. Diamond white cider. That's how that's how uh, alcoholics drink that. You used to see that on the Arboretum all the time. All the Irish blokes, because they mainly wore Irish on the Arboretum in them days. Saint Etienne and Twisted Tree. I've actually got a Twisted Tree somewhere. So we'll do a version. A version of um, snake bite tomorrow. Yeah, yeah. I've just looked and I've I've got some beers that I've already and cider lagers and ciders I've done a review of. So, what's black and tan again? Is it Guinness and a bitter? I forget. Special brewing white lightning. <sighs> Cheeky vimt. Blue Wicked and Port. Guinness and Bitter. In some ways, picking up multi-packs multi might be a good thing because at least then I can do these random stuff. Good evening. Yeah, there's a nice bitter end to it. I do like the banana. Yeah, it goes down a tree. Blackened tan. Yeah, I need to do these random reviews. It, 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 see, you know, it's stuff that you used to get in the pubs. I don't know if pubs still do these things. So what's a black velvet then? Fucking hell. You might have to comment afterwards so I can actually buy these stuff in. So I know what I'm buying. There is a dryness to it. There's definitely a dryness to it. I'm not getting a nutmeg though, funnily enough. A nutmeg is something that I absolutely love the flavour of. Brown and mild. I'll tell you what, I don't go to the pubs half as often as I should do. A lot of these, a lot of these things have ran me. I mean, I knew of snake bite. I've read about black and tan. Contra and lemonade. 
Guinness and sparkling wine. Ah, I've got some sparkling wine, I think. Oh, that was... yeah. Good evening. Yes, I've got a bottle of Prosecco. I ain't got a clue who gave it me. <clears throat> Someone gave it me. Red diesel for black fucking hell. You're definitely getting no mag. That's interesting. A rusty nail. Guinness with a shot of Bailey's. Well, I might have to go and get a four pack of Guinness. Make it. Wow, there's some amazing um, variations out there, isn't there? Definitely some amazing variations of stuff. I do like Tia Maria and Coke. I've always been a fan of Malibu, you know, and I don't give a shit. Uh, you know, it, it, it's a sweet drink. My mate used to say, you're drinking women's drinks. I don't give a shit. It tastes nice. You know, you're on your Jack Daniels. Jack Daniels. Ugh. Oh. Oh, bloody hell. I'm going to have to try and uh, remember to read back all the comments tomorrow. Baileys and brandy. I've got some brandy. Yeah, well, I think I have, unless I've necked it. Yeah, yeah, I, I'm liking this snake bite thing for tomorrow night. I've definitely got uh, some lagers that I've already reviewed. I've definitely got ciders that I've reviewed. And it can be a crazy, it don't have to be a certain brand. It can just be one, you know, a lager and a cider, I suppose. You know. Yeah. Yeah, I'm liking that. The snake bite review tomorrow night, yeah. Yeah, that'd be good. Something different. It'd be good for me as well, because I've never had it. Special brew. Okay. What I might do then is actually go to Sainsbury's, buy a four-pack of special brew, review the special brew, and then do the quirky, the quirky stuff. Port and Brander. Fucking hell. Amazing. Oh, I like in this. I mean, I've done ginger wine and brandy before. That was when I'd been to my mum's wake and I needed to sleep. Yeah. Took it at four in. Got a pint. So much brandy, so much ginger wine. Drank it, woke up the next day. Rum and pep. Pepsi, you mean? Yeah. I mean, I like rum and coke. I don't know. Didn't it used to be about 9.5 or was it 8.5? I can't remember. It's not fucking cheap though. Still expensive. Peppermint, right. <laughs> I do like to keep update up to date with the comments. I've been on some lives where people have at, I went on one one day and they were about 25 minutes behind. And they got to the stage where I was thinking, fuck's sake, I, I want to go. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Well, we at Sainsbury's we knew that the pissheads were the ones who drank special brew, so I can understand why. <laughs> port and brandy. I've got some port up the house that uh, no one's drinking. Might have to whittle it down to the shed and uh, do a port and brandy review. Oh, I like in these because these are quirky reviews. Nobody else is doing. Yeah. Uh, the only downer with that is getting the buggers. Uh, I'm looking. You know, you know. whenever I see something that I don't normally see, I'm always looking. Adnan's Broadside, amazing beer. For an old beer, it's outstanding. No, I don't want to kill the port. <laughs> no, I definitely don't want to kill the port. But uh, yeah. Definitely interested in others. Definitely. Yes. That might be quirky, quirky for tomorrow night. I think it's where it's made. Port is obviously made in Portugal. Sherry is made mostly in Spain, isn't it? 
if memory serves one correctly, I might be wrong, but uh, yeah, Port is from Portugal, hence the name. Um, Sherry's obviously, I think it's Spain, I'm sure it's Spain, Sherry. Then Sainsbury's also used to do tonic wine, never had that. And uh, this book fast, I need to try that as well at some stage. Broadside on tap is absolutely gorgeous. Oh, I love playing with stuff, Hardy. In, in a non-fucking sexual way, obviously. <clears throat> I do like a good port. And isn't that the great thing about, about these chats? Book fast is for piss heads. Yeah, well, you... <laughs> so we used to get people coming from Madeira and they, they used to make, was it tiramisu? Advocate and lemonade. Oh, snowball. I love a snowball. Prune rhyme with fig rolls. Now that's different. I've got this bad boy to review one day. Brambles. Uh, a coffee and walnut cake rum liqueur. Only 20% though. Yeah, Advocate Straight is nice. Um, but get the cheaper version, because the cheaper version tastes exactly the bloody same as the expensive version. Oh, dear. Mr. President. Yes, Mr. Trump. So, this new little shelf is great, because I can lean on it. 9.2%, Mr. President, if memory serves me correctly. Mm -hmm. Basically, yeah, Morris, Mox and Spencer's did an eggnog, or one of them did, an eggnog liqueur. It was amazing. Yeah, 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 you've got to have a snowball at Christmas. I actually didn't this Christmas because I couldn't get hold of a bugger. Good evening. I might do, it depends on what the wife's, if the wife's busy doing her cakes and I can do a, go on sneakily, I'm all right. But I don't want to piss her off, you know how it is with women. You don't want to be pissing them off, but yeah. Yeah, I might do. I might, might have a nosy on. I'll have a look on the odour, what's on live on, on, on the uh, internet, because I've got most of the beer reviewers now that I've, that I've heard of uh, on my um, YouTube pages now. Subscribe to most of them. And if I haven't, then I need to. Just to be know, I like to see what other beer reviewers do, you know. We've all got our own styles and our own likes, and that's what I like. I like they're all very different. As we all are, you know, normally. Yeah, I'm on Instagram. Yeah. Yeah. Raggy's Bear Reviews. Yeah. It's funny because on YouTube, I've got so many subscribers. On Instagram, it's, I'm absolutely shit. I think I need to start posting pictures of the actual beer along with the glass. That's what the, the top ones seem to do. I just post a picture of the bottle, I do. But Instagram, it's... Uh, you know, but I see some people on Instagram, they are getting fucking set, loads of stuff sent to them. And I'm getting bugger all. Did I miss some comments then? No? Oh. I've had warnings advocates and I've had the cheaper advocates and there's not much difference in between them, you know, apart from price. So, uh, yeah. Although this year I couldn't get hold of any cheap advocates. Yeah, I wondered that as well about the message retracted. That's interesting to know. Yeah, it's a good beer, yeah. Um, do you? Mm. Maybe me, maybe I'm a bit too blunt to be an influencer, you know. And if they watch my beer reviews, they'll be thinking, he's, he's swearing his arse off there. We're not, we don't want him as an influencer, it'd be, you know. Although Brew, I would have thought someone like Brewdog would I'd be a good influencer for them. Good evening. I 
I get that all the time. Stuff mysteriously disappearing. It's like when I wake up next morning. <laughs> Swedish beers. I've got a good mate in Sweden, to be honest. He's my admin for my... He's the server admin for my site. I don't know about that. Oh. I forgot where I was going to go now. Yeah, I've had that when I've walked down in the morning and there's a, a, a litre bottle of whiskey in the kitchen. And I've come down the next morning, I look at the bottle and I'm thinking, fucking I felt rough last night. I've come down and, and the bottle's like that, got that much in, I think, shit, fuck's up with that bottle. Lift the bottle up, test, you know, test, make sure it's not leaking. God knows what goes off. There's them times when you go down for a piss about two in the morning and you think, fuck it, another glass, woof. Yeah, I think I think it's an issue that the government needs to look at leaky bottles because I get it all the time, and you know it's it's a serious issue. Bottles leaking, good beer, and good. <laughs> yeah. Times I've woke up in the morning and think, shit, where did that go? Even this morning, I woke up and thought, bloody hell, what did I have late on last night? I swear as you get older, you more forget. <laughs> Cheers. You embarrass me. <clears throat> yeah, cheers to everyone. You know, the last year, as, as much as, I don't know, I give out positive vibes, but, you know, I've been on a journey the last oof, now the last 16 months, one hell of a journey. And uh, to come out the other side, you know, it's been great. And I've read all the comments over the last 16, 17 months. And uh, yeah, it's been a good journey. Building up a nice community of, of good beer drinkers, people with opinions. You know, you've got to have an opinion in life. Fucking hell. You can't all be, uh... yeah, drink more beer. But, uh, I mean, I've drank some amazing beer. You know, if there's anything about beer reviewing that you can say is that I've drank some absolutely top-class beers from breweries I've never heard of. And, uh, you know, low-cost beer has been a resource of cheap beer that just keeps blowing the mind. Yeah, fucking hell. I was at, I was at the window the other day because it was Friday morning. I didn't go to do the old man's garden. And I was, I was tapping away on the computer. Looks at like they're emptying my bin. And all of a sudden, you could hear this fucking armada of bottles going down the bin. I was thinking, shit, that's all my bin. And then next then next door's bin went out. He lives on his own, bloke on his own. And the fucking hell, his bin was worse than mine. He's, drink, he's on the wine all day, bless him. Yeah. It's a pity he didn't share some of his wines. I could be doing a load of other wine reviews as well. Hey, miserable bleeder. I'll take him some homebrew around. See you, mate. Have some homebrew. Swaps his. <laughs> yeah. I don't know how you beer reviewers who do the five hour ones actually get to five hours. Because by the time I've done an hour and a half or so, I'm absolutely pissed. And I need a piss. And, uh, you know, I couldn't do it for five hours. <laughs> so, yeah, snake bite tomorrow night then. Yeah, that sounds like a plan. We'll do the snake bite review. Whatever random log you've got, might be Galahad then. And whatever random cider you've got, because you get the, you'll get from the lager, even if it's a still cider, you'll get it. Oh yeah, I, love, I don't mind reviewing homebrew. I used to review my mate's homebrew, but we're not on the same job anymore. I need to actually contact mm. him and do it. Fucking hell, I'm, I'm bursting there. That's why I'm going to have to go in the arse in a minute and put my dinner on because I'm starving as well. Ah, Saturday night, you know what it's like. You need a way, you need your dinner. Plus I'm cooking the wife's dinner tonight. She's doing a cake again, poor bogger. She doesn't have to do some work, but she loves what she does. It's like me with gardening. I love what I do. And I love beer reviewing as well, funnily enough. 69. 
<clears throat> not getting involved in that, they're having a conversation. But yeah, I do watch, I do watch these li live pub jobbies and uh, it's interesting to see what's, what other people are like. I mean, last night I went, although I was watching Kent's. I've actually moved. Well, if you look at my, if you look at my uh, videos, you'll see my email address anyway. It's my website email address. Four and a half hours in the pub. Okay, now. I ain't had four and a half hours in the pub for a, bit. a year and a half, two years. No, about a year and a half. Yeah, it was definitely just before Christmas in 2020. Yay. Or 19 even. No, it wouldn't be 2020, would it? That was last year, 2019 then. Yeah, I think we went to, um, we was up in the, uh, in Mapley Top, uh, Weatherspoons. Although the way Weatherspoons treated their bloody, yeah, it was 19. The way Weatherspoons treated their staff, I'm not inclined to give them cunts my money anymore. Even if the beer is cheap, you know. I don't know, four and a half hours in the pub. Ten pisses in. Yeah. Once you broke that seal, then every every pint two pisses. So yeah, yeah. Whew. You can get through some pints in four and a half hours. I mean, if I, when I'm in necking mood, I, I mean, I watched England play football one night and had a barrel of lager in the kitchen. Not the greatest lager, but I still necked it. Homebrew. And uh, I think it was eight pints in an hour and a half. Although I was pissing the rest of the night. It doesn't taste like 5.2% now. Yeah. In two years' time, we'll be looking back on these last year and a half and we'll say, do you remember when we were sat at home for a year and a half doing that? Yeah. It'd be interesting to see with home group, with beer review channels, if people keep up lives, doing lives and all that. It'd be interesting. Because obviously there's going to be a lot more people going out and actually drinking and uh, having a life. It, well, let's hope so. Let's hope so the war looked after after furlough. I mean, if you can look after people, then do look after people. Yeah, going... I remember this old bloke at Iceland one day and he was nearly tearful. He couldn't get a bloody toilet roll. And uh, he, he came in after us and we all said, you, front of the queue, mate, you get to the front of the queue. And uh, and even us, the only bloody toilet roll we toilet rolls we could get was a 24 pack. But we didn't, obviously we weren't stockpiling, we just bought one pack. That's it, jobs are good and we will wait. Yes, yeah, so it'll be interesting to see if the live streams continue. Uh, from all beer reviewers uh, when things go back to normal. Be interesting. I've actually got this now where I'm doing live reviews and uh, I've got used to it. The wife's used to it as well. So, and in the summer months, it doesn't taste like 5.2%. It's a nice banana beer. I do get a, a chemical taste to it at times, but I believe that they're brewing it with proper bananas. So let's, let's hope that's the thing. But it is a nice banana beer. So before I absolutely piss myself, uh, <clears throat> pardon my French, I hope there's no ladies watching, I do apologise for the profanity. Um, yeah, a lovely looking clear pour. Today's beer is obviously a lot of hazy beers, which isn't an issue. Uh, massive banana on the nose, banana throughout, you know, it is what it is, it's lovely. I mean, we went to Sainsbury's where my workmates work and uh, shop shelf after row after row of empty shelves never seen anything like it in Sainsbury's for me still a great beer um, definitely the forerunner of all these craft beers out there this and the sticky toffee pudding are very I think in very inspirational beers so the craft stuff that's there these days for me a good 4.4 out of 5 yeah it might not be as good as it was, you know, as evolutionary as it was like six years ago, but uh, six, seven years ago, but a cracker of a beer, you know. 
right, I better go back up the arse. I'm absolutely roasting there. It's lovely to be warm. The other day when I was freezing, it was fucking awful. Um, thank you everyone for watching. And uh, yeah, thanks for subscribing, commenting and liking as well. Wow, 22 tonight. Hey, one of these days I might get 500 likes. It's like somebody else on there. Um, doubt it. But um, I'm not into that shit anyway. To be honest. <coughs> Pardon my French. But yeah, thank you everyone. Oh, banana. I definitely prefer the banana over the sticky. Yeah. Right. Better leave you all. Let you get on with your night and have a good night. And you never know, there might be a sneaky review later, but you never know. Thanks for watching. Cheers. See you soon. Oh, I need a piss so badly. Hope no one's listening.